How excited am I though? A new juicer. Jeez. Damn, I'm gonna juice every single day. 1000%. What are you still doing here? Jeez, hey. Jeez, I haven't used this in like two weeks now. Hmm. Hey, no reason to have you here. We gotta make some real food. Does that sound like you? Are you struggling to follow through with a healthy habit? Well, so am I. Hey, it is Martin from One Camera Life. And today we're going to focus on the last part of the behavior equation, motivation, ability, and prompt. We're going to focus on prompt, how to remind ourselves or set up the environment so that it reminds us to do a behavior that we want to do. And if you haven't watched my past videos, then you can go back and watch them because this is part of a video series about how to design for behavior change that actually works. So no prompt, no behavior. What is a prompt given? Prompt could be, we answer the phone when the phone rings, right? The ring is a prompt to trigger the behavior of answering the phone. It's an easy one. Or, um, or say we get a notification when we have to go to a meeting or, that, or we try to remember to do something in our head, like say, oh, five o'clock, I gotta call my girlfriend. Then try to remember that. Of course you're gonna forget it, but think you have the prompt in your head. So essentially we got three different types of prompts. We got the personal ones, me trying to remind myself to do something. Then we got an external reminder, like in like a notification on your phone or an alert, a calendar alert or something like that. And then we got a type of uh, a prompt or a trigger that's like based on a behavior. So we have one behavior and then doing that behavior triggers the next prompt or the next behavior. That was complicated. So let me specify a little bit. Let's use a very simple example. Say we want to start flossing, right? We're flossing your teeth after you brush your teeth, right? So then you can use a habit like brushing your teeth, which you do fairly automatically, I assume. You brush your teeth every day, so you do it frequently and you do it automatically and do it, yeah, all the time, right? So you can try not to link the habit of flossing together with brushing your teeth. So you can say to yourself, hey, after I brush my teeth, I'm going to floss. So we have the behavior of brushing your teeth, which is the anchor behavior, is what we do automatically already. Then we try to link new behavior, try to jam it into that behavior and make those two one unit. So whenever we brush our teeth, we also automatically gonna floss, try to make that into one. So BJ Fogg, the behavior expert, says that there's like a hierarchy of the effectiveness of these prompts. Obviously the personal one is at the bottom. So think about that. Try to remind yourself to do something forget that all the time, right? And then the second one, notification or external notification or reminder, which works kind of well, or it works well when you get notified and you actually go through with that behavior. But like he argues, and I experienced myself too, that in this day and age, you get so many notifications from everywhere, like on your phone, just ding, 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 and in your calendar and your email and everywhere, right? So you get so many notifications that drowns in that ocean of notifications and prompts. So you kind of in end up ignoring it. I don't know how many times I've ignored prompts like uh, reminders on my in my calendar that I didn't think was important enough. And on top, we have that behavior stacking prompt. We're trying to like link two behaviors. All right now. So now we got, you know, a clear picture of the different types of prompts. And now some important additional info. Location, frequency, and theme. Three very important things. What the heck do I mean by that? 
So being, for instance, brushing your teeth and flossing, those are the same type, that's like same theme. But say brushing your teeth and then mowing the lawn, it's two vastly different things. And then you got location. So you brush your teeth and you floss in the bathroom. So you're in the same location. So you brush your teeth and you mow the lawn, that's two different locations. And lastly, frequency. So frequency, say take mowing your lawn and brushing your teeth again. You brush your teeth every day. I highly doubt you're gonna mow the lawn every day. So you kind of want to have something that you do a similar amount of times, right? This is Martin from One Kim Real Life. Hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, subscribe to the YouTube channel because we still got more videos coming. And if you have any thoughts or reflections or questions, feel free to comment below. And also, if you like the video, like the video. Hey, if you just can't get enough of me, I have social media, Instagram, Facebook, one can be real life, I post stories, regular posts, questions, whatever. It's awesome. Have a good one.